roadside surveys, usually the only one that picks them up because they're not around usually during Christmas time. And we're talking from one to three birds or something. So it's got to be, it's kind of a neat bird that uh, I think Donnie will admit kind of need to see because we don't see them a lot, you know, one or two at the most a year. Yeah, yeah, one or two a year. So, so, uh, but, uh, but this is one that also, just like the bald eagle, feeding on fish, uh, got DDT poisoning, DDT, the insect that's like kind of almost wiped them out in the 50s and 60s, and, and uh, they are still endangered or threatened in many states, so the, their populations have come back, but not to the historical levels before DDT. Now we're going to go to, down to the uh, Falcons, and this is one of the little guys, the Merlin. Breeds uh, mainly in Canada and Alaska, and then it will winter kind of down in the western states and kind of into the southern states. But uh, we obviously get a few that will still find Kansas if it to be, and so we get a few around here. It eats mainly small birds. That first one was kind of brownish. This one's it's kind of hard to tell, but it's kind of more of a silverish gray. The brownish one was a female. This is the male. They eat almost exclusively. Small birds, you know, they'll take you up to the sides of blackbirds and stuff. Uh, here at the Christmas bird camp, looks like populations have been going up, and we're still not talking a lot of birds, but this does mirror what's going on on the national population. This is a bird that uh, its uh, breeding range and winter range is actually expanding, so the population seems to actually be increasing, and so it looks like it's happening here. size these guys are. Used to be called the, the sparrow hawk. Uh, not so much because it ate sparrows, because it's just small like a sparrow. He actually eats insects mostly. And this is what most people are familiar with. Uh, this is one that would sit on the power lines. You'll see them driving along the road. Kind of, It's a bird that had the ability to kind of just hover and wait for insects. Uh, so it eats mainly insects. You know, even, you know, most of these birds of prey has these huge talons and stuff. This guy's talons aren't very big, so it's going to be pretty hard for him to capture and kill anything bigger than a really small mouse. Is that pretty light in here? Is that, is that coming, coming to here? It looks like it, you can't really see that. It's going to light if you want. Yeah. Over the light. Severe winters, a lot of times it's the younger ones, uh, move 
particularly uh, in large cities. Uh, this was a bird that really took a crash in the 50s and 60s and 70s again because of DDT. And because of conservation efforts of reintroduction in some of the areas and because of people putting up uh, nesting platforms on skyscrapers in the big cities, uh, they've actually made a comeback. They eat mainly birds, so in the big cities, you got pigeons and starlings, and they're just having a heyday, you know. And there's a lot of places. I think I don't know, Topeka still has theirs, and they have a couple places in there where you can go down to the lobby and they got the cameras on their nesting platforms to watch these birds throughout the, the breeding season. So uh, you know, the e-bird is all what we we uh, use for uh, observations, and this is mainly birds you know passing through to their wintering grounds. And it shows, it shows uh, just on eBird that the population might be going up here at the Shine Bottle, but what's happening is, and this is a true representative, there are more observations of Herod and Falcon. We're seeing more of them. We, you know, the population has increased, but it's not, not real strong there. It's a photo by Dan Witt. I, Dan, why was it eating down here? The duck or something? Do you remember? Yeah, that was, that was a, a fun shot. I was uh, on the Red Wing Road, and I saw that